This conference will now be recorded. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. And I'd like to uh, echo uh, the sentiment from earlier that uh, we very much appreciate your time and being here today. I hope you, uh, at the end of this hour, that you will agree it was time well spent. And we will be talking about the products available from Olympia Splendid. And it's a company based in Brescia, Italy. And I will begin by, first of all, just uh, introducing myself, for those of you that I have not met. And my name is Jack Bartell, and I am manager of technical services for North America for Olympia Splendid. You see my email address there, and you also see a telephone number, which is an 800 number that basically rings directly to my cell phone anyway. So uh, if you have questions going forward, when the meeting is over, I've actually got about nine more hours of driving. So I will be available all day. <laughs> and uh, if you need to call, feel free. Uh, my cell phone, if you want to write this down, is area code 405-664-2075. And you can use that to reach me uh, if, or text me to ask me to call you or something, whatever you'd like to do. Uh, so uh, this is my 50th year in HVAC. It's an industry that has treated me well and, and provide it well for my family. And uh, I was 16 years with York International. I was their director of training. I was, after that, I was 15 years with a second largest distributor in the country for York International. And when I started with that company, they were about an $87 million business with uh, seven branches. I left back in August and they are now $187 million business with 20 branches. So they have done well with the, with the product. Prior to that, I was with a, a contractor. And, and prior to that, I was a service technician, uh, basically learning my trade. So that's just a little bit about what I have done. Uh, again, I, I'm a member of uh, Nate. I sit on the technical committee, the board of directors for PARA, RSCS, and also ACA. So I have been the last 15 to 20 years been giving back to the industry that has treated me well. And uh, if you ever have a need for someone to help you with any of those organizations, please feel free to give me a call. And uh, by the way, in these pictures here, I'm the one with the glasses on. So this gives you a little feel for who I am. I either work or I fish. There's really nothing else that goes on in my life. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll work Saturdays and Sundays and then if it's raining and then I will uh, go fishing on Monday and Tuesday. But uh, for, if you make your way to Virginia, that's my ride currently. And we could have a meeting on the boat and, and uh, I can charge the fuel to the company. So feel free. And this is my next ride, which I am in the market for right now. And my plan is to spend four months a year on it down in Florida. So Everybody's got to have a plan in life, right? <laughs> anyway, enough about me. Uh, first of all, I think it's important that you be familiar with the company. And we're only going to spend a minute or two on this. But the important thing to keep in mind is that Olympia Splendid is not a Johnny-come-lately company. They have been producing air conditioning and heating for 63 years. It's a family-owned business in Brescia, Italy. Of course, that's about nine, no, I'm sorry, about 30 kilometers from one of the worst hit red zones for this virus in Italy. And uh, they are still in production, although limited production because they don't have availability of all the people, but uh, the company is still, uh, you know, producing and we have plenty of inventory right now. So this is the global footprint of Olympia Splendid. You can see we have representation on every continent uh, that, uh, except for Africa and Antarctica and distribution in all of those areas. So the product that we are uh, most proud of and, and that we are promoting uh, very vigorously in the North American market is what we call the Maestro product. And we have two Maestro products available. We have the Maestro Smart, which is a single speed compressor, single stage compressor. It is 9,212 BTUs. And of course it's 115 volts. It's both heating and cooling. And as you can see from the picture on the upper right, 
the only thing you see on the outside of the building are two eight inch plastic grills. So the impact on the architectural uh, uh, ambiance of the building uh, is not as, as pronounced as say a mini split, which has to have a unit outside or a PTAC, which has to be uh, a very large hole that, that a lot of people find objectionable. So we get compared frequently with PTACs and, and the similarity is simply that they are both self-contained units, but ours is neither loud or ugly. And so we don't really compare to PTACs from that perspective. If you look at the picture in the upper right, you can see that the uh, unit was installed underneath a window. And then if you look at the uh, picture in the lower right, you can see pairs of these grills, three on each floor, and those were installed high above the window. So the point here is you can install this equipment either four inches from the ceiling or four inches from the uh, floor anywhere on an outside wall. It must be an outside wall that it gets installed on. And we'll talk more about that going forward. So it is a Italian design manufactured in Italy and it is a uh, easy maintenance system because the filters are right on top, easily accessible. They use what they call a pure system two, which is a series of filters. So it ships with this filter already installed. Then there are two other filters that can be used if the consumer uh, feels like it would be in their best interests. So, uh, and again, both the Maestro Smart as well as the Pro, which we'll talk about next, have no outdoor unit. So as you can see, again, in the upper right, it's a patented design. Nobody in the world has anything quite like this in the capacities uh, and even the design. There is a small manufacturer uh, that has tried to replicate this unit. They haven't done a very good job of it, quite frankly. They're not selling it in the US at all. I believe they do have some sales in Canada, but they only have one unit and it's not nearly the same uh, as, as this. But aside from that, Nobody has anything like it. So you have a certain level of, of exclusivity with this product that no one else can have. And then in the lower right, it gives you some sound ratings. Now these ratings are STC, which is sound transmission class. And the one below that is OITC, which is outdoor indoor transmission class. Now those two values are used in the US, mostly in large cities, where the impact on the wall that anything that you add to the wall will have on allowing more noise from the outside to inside uh, is considered the, 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 you know, obviously unacceptable to the uh, occupants because, uh, you know, in big cities, you have noises, you have buses, you have horns, you have uh, uh, all these things. And, and so if you allow more of that inside, it's, it's objectionable. So the higher the number, the better you are. And our unit, both the Pro and the Smart, have an STC of 36 and an OITC of 25. Nobody can have one higher. That's the highest that can be produced. So Amana actually publishes a piece of literature for their PTAC where they extol the virtues of how quiet their STC or how, how good their STC and OITC numbers are. And so by comparison, their STC is 29 to 31, depending on the size, and their OITC is 19 to 21, depending on the size. So they can not even with their best marketing efforts come close to what we can produce with this unit in terms of preventing noise from coming from the outside into the space. The unit comes with a seven-year compressor warranty, a two-year part warranty, and if the compressor fails in the first year, we provide an entirely new unit. But I can tell you that part failures are extraordinarily rare. And I'll give you an example. When I worked for York International, I was, uh, like I said, I was manager of training. And then prior to that, I was in the service group for many years. And I sat on the design team 
representing the technical side on a number of products. And we used to put together what we call a warranty ratio. And basically what it was was a warranty to sales ratio. And we would look at three metrics, parts that fail in 30 days, parts that fail in one year, and parts that fail in the first five years. So we would you know, massage those metrics into a single value. And if that single value was 2% or less, we thought we were geniuses because the goal is obviously zero part failures, but not, nobody can achieve that. But if you were under 2% with a product that sells tens and tens of thousands, that's a very good testament to your ability to maintain good quality. The warranty rate on this product, and keep in mind that unit you see right there, there are almost a half a million of those installed throughout the world. This is not a new product. It's been out there for close to 20 years. It's new to the US and to the Canadian market and to, the, to North America, but it is not new to the world. So of those half a million that are in the field for up to 20 years, the warranty to sales ratio is 0.002%. And that it represents an extraordinary commitment to quality. In the upper left hand, you see a picture of the remote control. So every unit sits with a remote control. And on the smart unit, I need to point out, because obviously it's going to be important for your markets. The smart unit comes with a remote control that is Fahrenheit only. So for the Canadian market, we would have to get an accessory with the unit that is basically a remote control that is Celsius only. When we talk about the Pro, the Pro has a remote that is both Celsius and Fahrenheit. You just push a button to change between the two. So it's important to keep that in mind. The installation is quite easy. This unit can be installed by any person that can cut a hole in a wall. So again, the wall must be, or the unit must be mounted on a wall that communicates with the outside. There is a template that comes with the unit that you simply put on the wall, level it, and now all your holes are there to be marked and, and cut. And here you see what it looks like in its, uh, it's basically a small, it's about a 36 by 24 inch piece of paper that ships with the unit. And again, you can see that there are two holes on each side. On the left, you see a 6.4 inch hole and an eight inch hole. Same thing on the right, which is the intake. And on the left, it's the exhaust, looking at it from this direction. The recommendation is that you use the eight inch holes whenever possible. But if you have a geometric constraint in your building or wall, you can use two 6.4 inch holes, but you suffer a little bit of capacity loss, or not huge, just minimal, and a little bit of efficiency loss. But if you can't get the eight inch, it, it gives you an option. And then there's also a little, uh, you know, a three quarter inch hole that you drill for the drain. So you make the two holes in the wall, one for intake, one for exhaust. You make the three quarter inch hole for the drain and then you install the ductwork. So this is actually what the ductwork looks like. It's a flat piece of plastic. There are two of those that ship with the unit, and then you cut it to the thickness of the wall, maybe an inch and a half shorter than the, inch of the, than the wall. And then you just roll it into a circle, and now you have a piece of duct. You put a seam of tape along the top, a seam of tape along the bottom, and when you put it into the wall, you make sure the seam is up top and that the holes are drilled at a slight angle so that if any rain or, or water got in there, they would just run back out again. And again, then you attach the unit to the wall uh, and plug it in and turn it on. So it takes a normal installation in a wall that is not, let's say not brick or, 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 or stone, uh, but standard home construction or building construction, it takes about an hour to install. And one of the things that's important to keep in mind is if you install the unit, and let's say it's on the second floor of a home or on the 13th floor of a commercial building, 
it's not easy to get a scaffolding to go up 13 floors or to repel down from the roof. So this unit can be installed completely from the inside without ever having to go outside. You cut your holes and you can see that the grill folds in half. You connect a spring and a chain onto the grill in two places, fold it in half. When it goes out the hole, it then opens up and it pulls tight to the building. And now you are completely done outside. This is a look at the springs and chain that ship with the unit, as well as the uh, anchors. But in the instructions, it tells you very specifically, these units weigh about 86 pounds. So when you install it, you wanna make sure that the hardware used is correct for the material of your wall. And, and the hardware that ships with the unit may not always be correct for your application. So you need to give that good consideration as part of or your contractors will as part of that installation. And there you see the grills and the rings. So on the outside of the wall, you have the grill on the inside of the wall, you have the ring. And then when the unit mounts on the bracket, which you can see right below the rings, the unit seals up against those rings. And again, this is the remote control. And I'm, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it ships, the, the smart unit ships with just one remote control that's for Fahrenheit. And if you want Celsius, that is an accessory that we have to, to, to work out with, with getting. And you can see on the upper left, there is a little door that goes up and down that gives you access to more of the features. And then if you look on the right, you see that the unit is 115 volt. It plugs into a standard wall outlet and it is a GFI uh, plug. So it has built-in protection for overcurrent. Now let's say you have a building and this is actually the look at a building in Canada where they installed, uh, a, a, I, don't, I forget how many, a dozen or more of these uh, with using a locally sourced plastic clear grill that blends in nicely with the building and then they created a little uh, composite frame, cut the holes in the glass with a glass cutter, and then mounted the unit on the frame. And, and so a glass building, no problem. This gives you a quick look at the air going in and the air going out. The only problem here is that this uh, graphic animation was created when the unit was an older version and the air when you're looking at the back of the unit in this older version the air was brought in on the right hand side if you're again looking at it from the back where the grill is on the outside wall and the uh, exhaust was the right hand side the unit we have today it's completely opposite so it's still everything works exactly the same way it's just that the intake is on the left and the exhaust on the right. And again, this is just a graphic showing uh, how the springs and how the grill uh, mounts on the outside and the opening in the wall, as you can see from the bottom picture, shows that it gets tilted slightly to the outside. And, and we're very adamant about the fact that we can't we have to be very careful in, in selecting the grills. And as you can see here, the one on the left is the one that comes from the factory. The one on the right was used in an installation that proved unacceptable because the free area that you see on the grill on the left and the free area that you see on the grill on the right are not equal. In fact, the one on the right is considerably less. So that restricted airflow means capacity loss, depending on your mode of operation, high or low pressures. And, and uh, so that's how we discovered this problem was the unit was having problems that others don't. So uh, I am currently working with two different vendors to provide us with some options for outside, both rectangular uh, as well as uh, different sizes to accommodate different things. So 
probably before the summer is out, you'll see some additional options for grills as well. And again, filters here, you can see someone took a bug screen or screen from their patio and installed it into the unit. And of course it restricts the airflow. It captures a lot of uh, dirt and debris, but it doesn't allow the unit to operate properly. So you can't use any accessories that have not been approved by Olympia Splendid USA. And I mentioned earlier that these units can be installed either four inches from the top of a wall or four inches from the bottom of a wall. And if, if you install it at the bottom, it comes already set up for bottom operation. If you have it at the top, you have to remove a baffle and turn it and flip it. So that way the air will blow down instead of blowing up. So it takes all of about two minutes. When it comes to condensate management, first of all, there's a drain that you drill through the outside wall. However, in markets where there are significant operation below zero Celsius or below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, then putting the drain outside is probably not the best opportunity because obviously it's going to freeze. So in the event where you can't put it outside because of your climate, uh, know that there are other options. There are two drains. There's one uh, on the side where, I'm sorry, in the back where it goes directly out the wall and there's one on the bottom. So it can go uh, out of the bottom into a, a, a pump or out of the bottom uh, into a drain line that goes outside, goes to say a drain line inside. So we, but the other thing to keep in mind as well is in summer, there is almost no condensate. You will probably never see any water come out of this thing in the summertime. And that doesn't mean it's because it's not removing water because it is, but the water is allowed to build up and then it pumps to the condenser coil where it basically re-evaporates into the exhaust air. So something that's been done with room units for many a year but this is something that proves very effective in, in again, increasing efficiency uh, while eliminating the need to have a great deal of water being sent somewhere. And it, let's say there, there are two floats in the unit and we're not gonna go into the technical aspects of the unit today, but there are two floats. One turns on a pump to say, okay, pump that water over the condenser coil and the other one, if the drain gets blocked up, the other one shuts the unit off so that it doesn't overflow into the room. So if you do get a, a shutdown because of water and you just need to get back up quickly before somebody can come look at it, there is a drain on the bottom of the unit that you can use to drain out all the water. And, and then uh, you'd get you know a few more hours operation until a service technician can correct the problem. All right, well, I'm gonna stop here just for a moment and ask if there are any questions. So I believe everyone's microphone is active. So if you have a question, please feel free to uh, uh, ask me now. Hey, Jack, can you hear me? I can, yes. Okay, uh, just a question about the sizes. There's a 12,000 and a 9,000, correct? Both at uh, 115? That is correct. So. It's actually the smart unit, which is the one we just spoke about, is 9,212 BTUs of cooling and 8,600 or so of heating. And the large unit, the Pro, which we're gonna talk about right shortly, is 11,600 BTUs of cooling and 10,600 BTUs of heating, okay? Okay. Both are 15, both are 115 volt. All right, thank you. Other questions? All right, we will move on to the pro version. And here you see the pro version. Uh, and again, the STC and IOITC numbers are again, top of class, no one can beat those. It is also made in Italy. You can see it's a little newer design and this is an inverter driven model. So as I mentioned earlier, the SMART is a single stage compressor, on, off, on, off. 
the inverter driven product has an inverter driven compressor and it has ECM motors for both indoor and outdoor. And so it is very, very efficient. It is even, even though it's larger capacity wise than the smart, it uses less Watts because there is no lock rotor. There are no capacitors. It is just something that uh, starts at a very slow speed and works its way up to, it can go from 35% to 100% of capacity based on the demand. And, and it does that with, you know, there, you don't have to say go fast or go slower. It simply looks at set point, how far it is from set point, what the rate of rise is or the rate of drop. And it decides what's the best speed to reach your goal in the most efficient manner possible. And you also see that this one also comes with a remote control and uh, it is both Celsius and Fahrenheit. Now we often get the question, if this is gonna be installed in a commercial application, it's unlikely uh, that the, 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 the hotel owner or the business, they're not gonna like a remote control that can just walk away. So we do have accessories available for uh, Wi-Fi as well as wired thermostats, if you will. Uh, but again, these have to be devices that have been approved to work correctly with the product. And so we do have options there for you. Now, again, this is just giving you some of the features and benefits of the, uh, and I, I see there's a mistake on here. I just noticed I'll have to fix that where it says heating capacity up to 10,200 BTUs is actually 10,600 BTUs. But there is an economy mode, a fan only mode, a sleep mode, a silent mode. So you have all of these different uh, modes of operation that the consumer or the or the room uh, occupants have complete control over. And there you see a close up of the user interface or the remote control. And that bottom right hand button is actually for Celsius or Fahrenheit. Just pushing the button will will change that. Okay. And this is just a look at all of the icons and, and what they mean. So if you have an icon on your, on your uh, remote control, this tells you exactly why that is being displayed. One of the things that you'll run into on a regular basis is we are a perfect opportunity for people to get rid of their PTAX. Again, they're loud, they're ugly. We have a, a job that's going into Miami in the next few days, in fact, where it's in a building right in South Beach, Miami. The, the owner has two of them and he rents them out about 300 nights a year they are occupied. The only complaint he gets from his folks working on the equipment or I'm sorry, are, are the people that are in there renting the, the, this small unit is that the uh, air conditioner is too loud and it keeps them up at night. And he's got relatively new PTACs in there. It's not like they're the old clunkier ones, but even new PTACs are too loud and too noisy. So he's replacing these units with ours and the sleeve stays in place. And if you look at the upper left, you see that blue box. That's actually what the uh, shape of the box is that you would get if you wanted the retrofit kit. And it is sized so that it fits directly into the sleeve. So from the outside, there's no real change in what people see. But from the inside, you have a sleeker unit on and the, the insulation is made of, or the box is made of inch and a half thick duct board. So it is uh, easy to cut your eight inch holes and your three quarter inch hole, and you don't have to do anything to the wall. So as far as installation practices go, the pro and the smart install identically. In fact, you could take a smart off the wall and put a, a, a pro in its place. And it takes all of about uh, a minute and a half to do that. So, uh, you know, we're not going to go through the same installation slides on the pro because it just wouldn't make any sense. But 
Uh, I will again open it up for questions here before we move on to the next uh, product. Okay, I don't hear any questions. Uh, and again, feel free to ask during the presentation as well. So we'll just move on. So what's coming down the road for Olympia Splendid and what other products will you have as, as uh, someone that uh, you know, is going to be selling and or installing the product. So Maestro Twin is the next one to come down the pike. And, and this, everybody's excited about because as you recall, I told you the unit has to be installed on an outside wall. And that remains true for the, you know, the, the Maestro Twin. But what you can do is from the Maestro Twin, twin run two refrigerant lines and one electrical line from the indoor unit to, I'm sorry, from the unit, the Maestro unit, which is mounted on an outside wall, but you can go to a second fan coil that's located on an inside wall. And that gives you the opportunity then to split your capacity between the two. And so we're very excited to see that come down the pike. I was hoping to have that uh, by third quarter this year, but because of all the nonsense going on about the, the these, uh, you know, this this uh, virus, that will probably get pushed back at least until the first quarter of 2021. We also have a product that, for those of you that live in cities or areas where you have both hot water and or chilled water for the building, these, what we call B2 airs, are an extremely thin fan coil with, again, a digital remote control. And so you can install it either high or low. It's a metal cabinet. It's easy to install. It's it's a has a easy clean feature and if you look at the dimensions over on the right hand side highlighted in yellow is the thickness of the unit so it only protrudes out into the space five inches so it doesn't you know it's not big and ugly and bulky by comparison to other fan coils that would serve the same purpose And again, the, our, our, uh, if you do a, a four pipe system, meaning you have hot water in the building and chilled water in the building, you can run those lines directly to this unit. And then you have dehumidification mode, which can be very, very attractive in some markets. So just keep that in mind. And again, we have the B2 Smart, which has inverter, I'm sorry, not inverter, but uh, ECM technology on the motor. And again, it's uh, very, uh, thin, 5.1 inches. We also have what we call the B2 Naked, and that allows you to hide it somewhere uh, where it's not going to be seen, and all you're going to see are grills. There you see a picture from the front and the back. And then there are accessories called a recess kit, and you can see that on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, you have the horizontal uh, kit, and, and there is also a white panel if you wanted it to be white instead of uh, the aluminum. Uh, there is a telescopic plenum that can be utilized with it, uh, and indoor and outdoor grills. Anything that you need for a normal application ships with the unit. And here you see the controls that are available. Uh, the remote control, there's an on-off button, and there is a digital display on the unit itself. And again, we also have the B2 Air Radiant Heat. Again, you see it's a little different animal. Uh, DC brushless ECM motor technology, so very quiet. Questions about the B2? Okay. Well, again, I think it's important that we keep in mind uh, the product is new enough that 
if you have questions after this session, by all means, as I mentioned earlier, call me and we'll get it taken care of. And then finally, we have our Dolce Clima line. Again, this is an Italian design. We actually, it's designed in Italy, but these, this unit is actually uh, it can be used for both residential and commercial, but it is designed in Italy and manufactured in China. So uh, when they get shipped, they are shipped as a complete product from China directly. Our current warehouse is in New Jersey, northern New Jersey. And that's going to be moving probably by the first of the year. It will be moving to Dallas, Texas. So currently everything ships out of the East Coast. So the move is basically meant to make it easier for people uh, to access that, you know, the, the product by shipping it anywhere in the country for about the same cost. So in New Jersey, we have both parts as well as equipment uh, where everything currently would ship from there and you can count on the fact that uh, we also have any parts that might be required are already in our inventory as well so the part you don't have to wait for something to get here from italy if you need a part because we have everything that is needed and these are just a couple of the features which it's a uh, the, the, the compact is about 10,000 BTUs of cooling. And here you see all the specifics about what that unit can do on a tech sheet. Then we have the Dolce Clima Pro 14 heat pump. Okay, so that is a heat pump unit. And there you see the specs on the heat pump unit for the, for the, uh, 14 Pro, so it has 14,000 BTUs of capacity for cooling and 11,000 BTUs capacity for heating. And then finally, we have the Pro AC, again, 14,000 BTUs, uh, but no heat. And again, there are all the stats. Now, one of the things I'll get questions on is in addition to uh, the, the, the accessories that are available, uh, we will get questions, let me page back up here, uh, as regards how do I run the pipes out the wall for the portables, uh, all of that is explained very well in the instructions. And uh, I'm actually rewriting all of those as we speak uh, to kind of narrow down the numbers of books that we need. but. Uh, anyway, anything that you need, if you send me, uh, and of course I can send this to Bernie, but I put together a zip file that all of you are welcome to, and it contains this PowerPoint presentation. It contains this same file in PDF format. It includes the uh, everything that that is required okay so those are the products with which we are uh, promoting to the greatest extent right now and and uh, I'm again going to open it up to questions and if there are uh, please feel free to ask them now uh Bernie, can you send me a copy of this uh, this PowerPoint presentation, or Jack, if you can send it to Bernie, and then Bernie, if you can forward it. I would do so, and, and, and like I say, because I'm on the road, I probably won't be able to do that until uh, tomorrow. But uh, if I can get it done as soon as we hang up here, this file that contains the PowerPoint presentation, also a PDF version of that, and it includes the tech guides for all the products we just talked about. The installation instructions for the smart. I'm redoing the pro right now, but it's not finished yet for the best version. But then also it has the the wiring diagram, 
parts list and exploded view of the parts. So that one file gives you basically everything you need. Yeah, okay, thanks very much. And one last question, Jack. I, I missed it at the beginning. Uh, I wasn't sure. I, I don't assume that the that the uh, 9000 is Energy Star certified because it's a start and stop PSC. But does the uh, 12000 um, yes. Maestro Pro have Energy Star certification? It does. It does. Okay. The, uh, the, the Pro, I believe, is uh, has a CEER, which is Combined Energy Efficiency Ratio of uh, – going off the top of my head i think it's 9.73 and smart is 9.3 or 9.4 so this is another thing to keep in mind that these units are considered by the department of energy in the u.s as room air conditioners and so uh they are rated in ceer and not seer so ceer is combined energy efficiency ratio and as you know, SEER is seasonal energy efficiency ratio. And, and typically the difference is about a tenth of a point. So the SEER is typically a tenth of a point higher than the CEER. Because the CEER, the only difference really is it also counts the number of watts that are used when the unit is uh, in standby mode. So that's basically what the difference, but we are having units. We currently do not have the units uh, AHRI certified. And again, there is no requirement that we get them AHRI certified, but we are spending quite a sum of money, over $15,000 to get the pro certified by AHRI because we know a lot of customers put a lot of faith in that and because it's a known quantity to them. So when these, this testing is done, we will also be able to provide accurate SEER. That would have been done already, except for this darn virus. So the engineer in Italy is not allowed to leave Italy right now. So uh, as soon as he's freed up, we will get that done because he's gonna actually go to the testing lab and get that, uh, be there for the testing. Okay. Thanks for that. Other, no problem. Other questions? All right. Well, we are just at the top of the hour. We started a little late, but we kind of uh, stayed within our, our time frame. Again, I will make this uh, video available to anybody that wants to look at it. And uh, again, I gave you my phone numbers earlier. And if there are any questions after we hang up, something that comes to mind, don't get to contact me. Uh, it's Bernie here, Jack. Thank you very much. And then thanks, guys, for uh, attending the call. Um, if you need any electronic brochures or literature or uh, information, just send me an email and I'll get that to you. And then once Jack sends me this recorded version, I'll uh, forward this to everybody.